Hey, what's up, y'all? This Charlie. On today's episode, I'm going to be showing y'all how to make my delicious seafood baked potato chowder. Now, it combines the baked potato with seafood, which we use shrimp, and a homemade chowder. Now, it consists of cubed potatoes along with some bacon, which we take the bacon fat and we make a roux, which is part of the chowder. We also add shrimp, which we're going to take the shrimp heads and shells and make a concentrated and flavorful shrimp stock along with our milk, cream, sour cream, chives, two different types of cheeses, a little onion, garlic, and my favorite blend of New Orleans seasonings to create a delicious and flavorful comfort food dish. This recipe calls for about six to eight servings. It's flavorful, wonderful fall or winter dish. Absolutely delicious. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, here's all what you'll need to make your seafood baked potato chowder. Let's get started with our ingredients. You'll need one and a half to two pounds of medium-sized russet potatoes, one and a half or two pounds of small to medium-sized Louisiana shrimp, thick cut bacon, this is about one pound here. You also need some salted butter, all-purpose flour, whole milk, heavy whipping cream, sour cream, sharp cheddar cheese, shredded Parmesan cheese, and for your seasonings, you will need some green onions, garlic, salt, black pepper, Tony Saturated Creole seasoning. Now, if you don't have this, you can use the Zatarain's Creole seasoning or Slap Your Mama Cajun seasoning. And you will also need some Chef Paul Podom's Seafood Magic and some freeze-dried chives. And there we have it. All right, let's get straight to it. So here I have uh, three ounces in weight of green onion. And I'm gonna just go ahead and chop this up. And I'm gonna chop up the ends to the green onions as well. All right, here I have three cloves of garlic. I went on here and cut them in half. All right, here I have a uh, garlic press. I'm gonna just go ahead and press the garlic halves. And there we go. All right, here I have a shredder. Now I'm going to go ahead and shred the entire eight ounce block of sharp cheddar cheese. All right, and there we go, all done. Now we're gonna place this into the refrigerator until we're ready to add it into the, uh, the chowder. All right, here I have a russet potato and I have a potato peeler. And now I'm gonna just go ahead and just peel the russet potato. Now I'm gonna go ahead and peel the second potato. All right, there we go. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and take the russet potato and I'm gonna just go ahead and cut that in half. And from there, I'm just gonna cut it into quarter pieces. All right, I placed my potato cubes into this uh, medium-sized Tupperware. And to that, I'm just gonna add some water, about three and a half cups right on in there. And to that, I'm just going to add about a capful, about a teaspoon of, of vinegar. I'm going to just give this a quick stir. Now, this is going to clean the potatoes and prevent them from turning colors. You see what I'm saying? So, yeah. Now, so we're going to let this sit in here for about 8 to 10 minutes. And once your potatoes are finished soaking, you could just take them and just drain them. And from there, you could just set this on the side until it is ready to be cooked. All right, let's get started with peeling our shrimp. So here we have a, a shrimp here, and we're just gonna take the shrimp here, and we're just gonna remove that, and we're gonna place that into this bowl over here. And now, we're just gonna peel the shell off of the shrimp tail. 
you're going to take the shrimp shell and we're going to place that into the bowl with the shrimp heads and we're going to take the shrimp tail and place that into a separate bowl all right let's go ahead and debane our shrimp so here we have a shrimp tail and as you can see back here there's the shrimp's digestive tract so we're going to take a sharp knife and we're just going to carefully cut out the back of the shrimp just open this up like that and as you can see the shrimp's di digestive tract is right here so we're just going to go ahead and take our hand and just pull that out and there we go our shrimp has been deveined all right now i'm gonna go ahead and take my shrimp tails and i'm going to add them into this strainer and i'm going to rinse these shrimp tails off with cold water preach your fire to medium heat all right, let's get started with frying our bacon so in this large saucepan. I'm going to add the bacon strips. Now, I cut them in half right here, as you can see. And I'm going to just drop them on in there. All right, there we go. Now, bacon normally take about 9 to 15 minutes to fry, depending on uh, your pan or your stove and the thickness of the bacon. So, you want to pay attention to all that. And I'm going to let y'all know the, the uh, total frying time once it's done. Alright, it's been about 12 minutes now for our bacon. And it is done. Now you're going to go ahead and turn your fire off. Alright, now I'm going to go ahead and take my bacon. And I'm going to place it into this serving bowl lined with napkins. Now we're going to set this on the side and let this cool completely. As for our bacon fat, we're going to leave it in the saucepan until it cools completely. All right, now I'm going to take my uh, cooled bacon fat and I'm just going to add it into this small container here. I'm going to take that and I'm going to make a roux with the bacon fat at a later time in the video. So you want to stay tuned for that. Preach your fire to medium heat. All right, let's get started with boiling our potatoes. So in this medium sized pot, I have uh, six cups of water. And while that's coming up to a simmer, I'm going to add about two teaspoons, about one to two teaspoons of salt in there. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a quick stir. I'm going to go ahead and add my potato cubes. Now I'm going to go ahead and give this a quick stir. Now I'm going to let this simmer for about 10 to 12 minutes. All right, it's been about 10 to 12 minutes now. Let's check on our potatoes here. Oh yeah, that's done. They're ready to go. Now some of them might break up a little bit. Don't worry about that. Now you're going to go ahead and turn your fire off. Now I'm going to go ahead and add my potato cubes into this mesh strainer. And from now I'm just going to let them sit in there, cool off until they're ready to be cooked. Preach your fire to medium heat. All right, let's get started with our shrimp stock. So in this medium sized four quart pot, I'm going to add four cups of water. Now for our seasoning, we're going to add a half a teaspoon of salt, one eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper, a half a teaspoon of Tony Sachery's Creole seasoning, and a half a teaspoon of Chef Paul Poudhon's Seafood Magic. Now I'm going to go ahead and just give this a quick stir. Next I'm going to add my shrimp heads and shells. Stir all the ingredients together. What we want to achieve is, is we're going to let this cook all the way down. And it's going to become a nice, rich, and flavorful, and concentrated shrimp stock. All right. I'm going to let this simmer for 40 minutes. All right. It's been about 40 minutes now. And as you can see, our mixture has cooked all the way down. That's exactly what we're looking for. Now you're going to go ahead and turn your fire off. All right. Here I have a medium-sized bowl with a mesh strainer. All right, now I'm going to go ahead and add my shrimp heads and shells right into this mesh strainer. Just pour that right in there. All right, now we're going to remove the shrimp heads and shells. Make sure that it's, you shake it. Now we're going to discard the shrimp heads and shells. 
and there we have it our homemade shrimp stock is done now as you can see this is a very small amount but it's very very strong it's going to give our chowder a wonderful shrimp flavor all right and once done you should have about three four to one cup of homemade shrimp stock in here preach your fire to medium heat all right let's get started with making our chowder so in this large saucepan we're going to add two tablespoons of our bacon fat just going to add that in there Here's the second tablespoon. Go add that in there. All right, now I'm gonna just spread that around. I'm gonna let that get hot for about one minute. Next, I'm gonna add two tablespoons of all-purpose flour. I'm gonna just take my spatula and I'm just going to stir this continuously until it comes together. All right, that looks good. I'm gonna add one cup of my chopped green onion right on in there. Give this a quick stir. Now I'm going to stir this continuously for about two to three minutes. All right, it's been about two minutes now. That looks good. All right, next I'm going to add one tablespoon of our pressed garlic or chopped garlic if you chopped your garlic. I'm going to just give that a quick stir. All right, next up, I'm going to add two cups of whole milk. Make sure that your whole milk is at room temperature. Two third cup of Hebu whipping cream at room temperature. And remember that concentrated shrimp stock that we made. Three fourth cup to one cup of that. Pour that right on in there. And about a half a cup, or you can also increase this to two third cup of sour cream at room temperature all right y'all now to help break up the sour cream i'm about to use the whisk i'm gonna just use the whisk to stir all the ingredients together so that way they'll all come together all right now while this is coming up to a slight simmer let's go ahead and add some seasoning i'm gonna sprinkle about one fourth or a half a teaspoon of salt one eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper half a teaspoon of Tony Sachery's Creole seasoning, one fourth teaspoon of Chef Paul Perdome's Seafood Magic, and one tablespoon of freeze-dried chives. Or if you're using fresh chives, same thing, one tablespoon. Now I'm going to go ahead and take my uh, spatula and just give this a quick stir. Alright, next I'm going to go ahead and add my shrimp. Now I'm going to go ahead and give this a quick stir. Now I'm going to let this simmer for about three to four minutes, stirring occasionally. Now you're going to go ahead and turn your fire off. All right, next I'm going to go ahead and add my bacon bits. I added a chopped up a little smoked sausage and seared it and add that in there too, just to make it a little special. Followed by our cubed potatoes. Let's go ahead and give this a quick stir. Now we're going to let this cool for about five to 10 minutes. And next we're going to add one eighth of a cup. That's about two tablespoons of our shredded Parmesan cheese right on in there. And we're just going to give this another quick stir. All right, next I'm going to add about two cups. That's about five ounces in weight of the sharp cheddar cheese. So I'll add that in there. I'm going to just take my spatula and I'm just going to give this a quick stir. Now I'm going to stir this continuously until that cheese melts into the cream mixture. Now if your mixture curdles at any point, don't worry about that. I got a little quick troubleshoot for you. Alright, here's a quick troubleshoot for the curdling. If your mixture turns out curdled, don't worry about that. That can be fixed. What you're going to do is, you're going to add an additional half or three-fourth cup of heavy whipping cream. And then just stir it. Now it's not going to affect the flavor or anything like that. Okay. And from there, our seafood baked potato chowder is done. Look at that. Mm, mm, mm. Now for some quick tips. This will thicken as it cools. 
And remember I told you to step about the curdling. Remember to add about a half to a three-fourth cup of heavy whipping cream and stir and that will take care of the curdling. And for best results, you can serve this the very next day so that way the flavors can settle and increase overnight. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Seafood baked potato chowder made by New Orleans native. If you like my channel, hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell button if you want to be notified of my videos. I have an official website for all of my recipes, including for this delicious seafood baked potato chowder. You can go to www.charliecookandrews.com. You can also find me on Facebook, Instagram, and on Twitter under the name Charlie the Cook Andrews. Stay tuned as Charlie's Taste Test is coming up next. Can't wait. Ah. Now it's time to go ahead and take a bite. Oh man, look at how creamy that looks. Oh. Y'all, the flavor of this is outstanding. Oh, wait. You can taste the flavor of the shrimp and the seasonings that we added. The potatoes and those cheeses and that shrimp. Oh, my God. Y'all, this is, I can't really describe the flavor. It's so good. It's, it's like a baked potato with shrimp and a chowder combined. I mean, it's like a flavor like no other so give the recipe a try anyways i hope you all enjoyed the video thank you so much for watching and until next time have a good one peace